Hey everybody, Kurt Risch here, and thanks for joining me on The One Shepherd, where we support seekers and believers. So recently, um, I was asked the question, is Jesus God? Um, oftentimes you get people who say Jesus never claimed to be God. Um, scripture doesn't tell us that Jesus is God, uh, both of which are totally untrue. Um, you need to spend a little time looking at the scripture. There's many, many verses in which Jesus either directly or indirectly indicates that he's God. There's also, of course, the, the names and the titles he was given, which all indicate that he was God. And of course, you know, the, the final part of that is all the prophecy that's in Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled indicating that he was God um, play into this as well. Obviously, we can't cover all of that in 15 minutes. We really can't even cover that in an hour. So um, I'm going to talk about just a couple titles he was given, talk about um, a few places in scripture where Jesus clearly indicates that he's God. Uh, if you are interested after watching this and would like to know more, feel free to reach out to me. I, I'd be glad to talk to you some more. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start out by looking at a few of the uh, the names or titles he was given. The first one, Jesus Christ. Um, the correct title would be Jesus the Christ. And uh, Christ is, uh, the, the Greek for that is Christos. And that's uh, actually the Greek name for the Hebrew name Messiah. And uh, in Hebrew, it would be Mashiach. And that's Strong's Concordance number 4899 in Hebrew. And it simply means the anointed one the cons that is consecrated as the king, priest, and prophet. And there's a number of prophecies about the coming Messiah in the Old Testament, which Jesus fulfilled them. So, um, you know, if you want to spend a little time looking at that, that's a good place to start. Uh, the next one is a single prophecy, which is in Isaiah uh, chapter 7, verse 14. And we see the fulfillment of that in Matthew 1, verse 23. And that is Jesus will be called Emmanuel. Um, and it's important to understand this is something he was called. Um, we, we often translate it as his name will be, but it's what he's, he's going to be called. And uh, it's important to understand what Emmanuel means. Um, oftentimes it's incorrectly translated because they drop off the, the title that's given to it in Isaiah 7, 14. Um, people just say Emmanuel, which means God is with us, but they add L. So it's L Emmanuel. Um, that is Strong's Concordance numbers 410 and 6005. And that actually translates as Almighty God with us. So in other words, very clearly... By calling Jesus Emmanuel, it is saying that the Almighty God is with us. And then, of course, there's the his actual name, Jesus. In Hebrew, that's Yeshua. And uh, Yeshua means Jehovah saves. So here again, we get an example, you know, just by his name, that he is God, the Savior. So... Um, there's also, of course, the name given, the, the Hebrew name for God. Um, we say God, but but uh, the Hebrew say, his name is Elohim. And Elohim means the supreme God and the plurality of God as it's used in scripture. Okay? So it's not just, and, and the Trinity is something we can discuss in another session because there again, that's not something we can talk about easily in a 15 minute or so video. But, um, Elohim uh, and that plurality of God. We see Jesus make reference to that in Matthew 28. So I'm just going to read that to you. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of, it, end of the age. So here, Jesus very clearly indicates that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's that plurality of God. Um, so, you know, again, that's something we can look at in greater depth at another time. But what I want to do now is go ahead right into and let's look at some of the verses 
in which Jesus tells us he's God. So in John uh, chapter 14, verses 7 to 9, um, this is one of my favorite verses because it's very, it, you get a very human side to things here. Um, Jesus says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to Philip, have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Um, I often feel like Philip, you know, I ask the dumb question that nobody else wants to ask. <laughs> uh, you know, Jesus reply, you know, how can you ask, ask me, you know, to see the father haven't don't don't you already know me you know and then he literally says to him he who has seen me has seen the father um so very clearly here jesus tells philip and the rest of the apostles who are listening i am god so the next verses we're going to look at come up in john 8 verses 53 to 59 and here Jesus is talking with the Pharisees. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I speak truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason you do not hear them, because you are not of God. The Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets also. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Surely you are not greater than our father Abraham who died. The prophets died too. Whom do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God, and you have not come to know him, but I know him. And if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Therefore, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So there's a lot to unpack there. Um, you know, in that short little conversation, uh, first off, Jesus says, um, you know, if you honor the father, you would honor me. And if you hear the word, if you know your father, you, you would hear my words. But because you don't hear my words, you are not of the father. Um, so he's literally saying, if you're not of God, you can't hear it. You won't understand the words of God. And because the words I speak, you don't understand. You don't hear them. In other words, there he's telling them he's God. But then they actually go on. They say, you know, are you greater than Abraham? And he says, before Abraham, I was. In fact, he goes on to say that Abraham was excited to see his time or his age. You know, when he says his day, he means his age, the coming of, of Christ. So Abraham was excited for that. But even more importantly is the key phrase here that he says, before Abraham was. I am. If you look at the Old Testament, Exodus 3, verses 13 to 14, Moses is talking to God. And God has just given Moses instructions to go lead Israel out of Egypt. And Mo this is Moses' response. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? 
What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus shall say to, you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So when, when Jesus responded, I am, he was literally saying, I am God. He's, he literally identified himself by the name that the Jews used for God. It was, and they recognized that. That's why they picked up the stones. They were going to stone him because the punishment for blasphemy was stoning. And blasphemy meant, in this case, a man claiming to be God. We also see that again in Mark 14, verses 60 to 64. Uh, Jesus has been arrested. He's standing before the, uh, he, he's being tried by the Jews, the Sanhedrin. Uh, and this is a conversation that takes place. So Mark 14, verses 60 to 64. The high priest stood up and came forward and questioned Jesus, saying, Do you not answer? What is it that these men are testifying against you? But he kept silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Tearing his clothes, the high priest said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. How does it seem to you? And they condemned him to be deserving of death. Once again, Jesus very clearly says, I am. He used the name that the Jews used to identify God. Um, very directly answering. And again, the high priest recognizes it, as does the rest of the Sanhedrin. And they sentence him to death because they see him as a man, not as God. Um, this next one is uh, another one of my, it's, it's one of my more favorite portions of scripture. I like the story here. So this is uh, John 10 verses 24 to 33. The Jews, the Jews gathered, then gathered around him and were saying to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given to me it, them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, For a good work? We do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Is Anybody who says Jesus didn't claim to be God needs to read this because right here, the Jews themselves clearly state that Jesus claimed to be God. That's why they're going to stone him. That's what they actually say. Um, and so you understand the claim when he says, I and the father are one. You know, sometimes people say this, you know, about their, their spouse, about their loved one, you know, about somebody they're really close to. Um, meaning that they speak with one voice or they're, they're, they're related. The, the word that he uses here for one, when he says, I and the Father are one, is the Greek word heis. And it's the neuter form. Like we think masculine and feminine, this is the neuter form. And the neuter form means uh, part of the same or of the same essence. So Jesus was literally saying that God and I are one in the same. And the Jews understood that, which is why they were going to stone him. Um, so that's really, you know, a quick breakdown of a few verses and a, and a few of the titles. Um, this is an awesome study, guys. If you're if you want to uh, spend some time studying this yourselves, I strongly recommend it. Um, there are many, many places in scripture, both 
like I said, Old Testament prophecies in Daniel and Isaiah, even in Psalms, um, you know, and actually all the way back to Genesis, there's Old Testament prophecies that Jesus fulfills. Um, there's the names and the titles he's given. There is the scripture itself, both in the gospels where Jesus directly and indirectly claims to be God. And then after that, in all the epistles, um, those letters written by the apostles, you will see them clearly indicating that Jesus is God. Um, he is part of that Trinity. Guys, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and may God bless you.